Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today for another book miss video. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to tier rank all of the 2023 releases that I've read this year. So today we are going to be doing something a little bit different on my channel. It's not something that I've ever attempted before. It is a tier ranking video. Now, of course, I've seen plenty of them, but I've never actually tried it myself. And for this video, I'm actually going to have to be at my desk in the common area of my house because that's the only way I'm going to be able to screen record. So we're going to go ahead and switch to out there. I really hope that it turns out okay. Like I said, I've never tried anything like this before on my channel, but we're going to see how it goes. So let's go ahead and head out to my desk and we'll get to tier ranking. All right, everybody, I'm out here in my common area. And of course, in advance, I'm going to apologize for a couple of things. So first, all of my animals are out here with me. And so you are likely going to hear them in the background. Also, I have way less control over lighting out here. So the lighting could be a little bit weird, especially since I'm primarily dealing with natural lighting. And also, I apologize if the camera shakes a little bit. You are just kind of stacked here in front of me. And so as I move and like use the mouse for my computer, it might get a little bit shaky. I'm going to do my best to minimize that as much as possible. Again, I'm just kind of working with what I have. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record my screen and we are going to tier rank the 2023 releases that I've read this year. All right, so my releases are in no particular order. I just uploaded them kind of haphazardly. And so I'm not going to be talking about them in any other order other than the order that they're listed here. I have six categories. I have DNF, so obviously I didn't finish the book. Waste of time, don't bother, is basically what it sounds like. It's basically like a two, 2.5 read, really nothing impressive, didn't like it all that much, don't really recommend. Meh, forgettable, is basically your ultimately mediocre, forgettable three-star read. Okay, not great, not bad, is also kind of like a three, 3.5 star read kind of middle of the road you had a decent reading experience with it but it's not a favorite and it's not really going to stick with you loved it is basically a four star almost perfect is where you really really loved it but it didn't reach that five star rating and god tier is of course five star i will always recommend the book so let's go ahead and get started uh so first i have when i'm dead and that's easy because i dnf'd it i dnf'd it at 40 percent. i did not care about what happened in this at all what have we done by alex finley i actually just recently finished this i haven't reviewed it on my channel and I think I'm going to go with okay, not great, not bad. It's definitely not a new favorite of mine. I don't even know if it's going to stick with me very much. So that's where it's going to go. All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. Loved it. Easy four stars. That was a solid sophomore thriller from Stacey Willingham and I highly recommend. S.A. Cosby, of course, is loved it. It wasn't nearly as good to me as Razorblade Tears, but still a solid read. His writing is like lyrical thriller, if there is such a thing. And so I definitely recommend his books. The Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas. I'm gonna say it's meh, forgettable, but it's basically almost a waste of time, don't bother. This was one of the most basic and generic fantasies I've ever read in my entire life. And I really kind of wish that I hadn't read it. So it was definitely, a forgettable read. Dark Corners by Megan Golden. Loved it. I think I liked that more than The Night Swim, actually. Georgie All the Way. Ooh, I, I'm wavering between meh, forgettable, and okay, not great, not bad. Because I remember liking it when I was reading it. It was okay. But I knew when I was reading it that it was nothing that was going to stick with me. So it's kind of like bordering these two. I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with okay, not great, not bad. Because I don't think that there was anything inherently wrong with it. It just wasn't the substantial romance that I was hoping that it would be. Gone Tonight by Sarah Buchanan. I think I'm going to go ahead and put that in Love It because that one actually surprised me more than I was expecting it to. This is the first book that I've ever read by Sarah Buchanan on her own. I typically read the books that she writes with Greer Hendricks. And so I was actually really impressed with what she was able to do here. How to Sell a Haunted House. I'm going to go ahead and do Love It. I don't want to say that this is my least favorite Grady Hendricks so far because it was still really good and it had a lot of the things that I love about it. It was just really weird, y'all. There were puppets and it got a little bit crazy, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with Love It. Happiness Falls. I'm going to say, okay, not great, not bad. Um, I had a lot of technical issues with this story. It was absolutely not what I was hoping for when I went into it. I, I'm going to stick with okay because the writing was unquestionably good and it was very thought provoking. And there was a lot of talk about the science of happiness, which I found interesting, but that's not what I wanted going into the story. We're going to go with okay, not great, not bad. I have some questions for you. Waste of time. Don't bother. I did rate this like a three, 3.5 star, but looking back on it, I was serenely disappointed by this one. I had high expectations, especially since 
Rebecca Mackay, I think was like maybe a Pulitzer Prize candidate. I might be incorrect about that, but I had really high hopes about this. This was supposed to be like a more literary-esque thriller, dark academia-ish. It just did not work for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and put waste of time, don't bother. The intern I'm gonna put here at, okay, not great, not bad. Inkblood Sister Scribe, I'm gonna say that it was forgettable. There was really nothing to stand out about this for me. I remember loving it when I started this and I thought that I was really going to enjoy this, but overall it just fell really, really flat for me. So meh, forgettable. Just the nicest couple is also meh, forgettable. That was the first Mary Kubica that I ever read and it's probably going to be the last. I do remember while I was reading it, being pretty interested to find out what happened, but I remember almost no details about the story whatsoever. My cats are playing, they've got the zoomies. So that might be what you're hearing in the background if you can hear it. Just another missing person. I'm gonna say it's okay, not great, not bad. I really liked it, but it wasn't quite loved it. It wasn't quite that four stars. So I'm gonna go with okay, not great, not bad. The last word, I should have made a category for disappointing. Um, I'm gonna say okay, not great, not bad. I just had super high expectations for the story and it definitely let me down, hardcore. The only one left, almost perfect. I absolutely love this story. It's one of my new favorite Riley Sagers. At the end, the twists and turns, it's wild. Y'all, I highly recommend this one. Love theoretically, I actually loved this one and I'm very happy that I did because I did not like Love on the Brain. So when I went into this one, I went into it very trepidatiously, but thankfully this one worked for me. None of This Is True is also going to get, I loved it. Her books are some of the strongest thrillers that I've ever read and she consistently is a strong thriller writer. So she deserves loved it spot. The writing retreat was okay. Not great, not bad. I don't want to say that it's meh forgettable because I actually do remember quite a lot of what happened in the story. It went in a very different direction than what I was expecting it to. And I don't know how I feel about that because it did get a little weird. I did get a little bit out there, but overall I think it deserves kind of like an okay rating. The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi, I'm gonna say is okay, not great, not bad. I don't think I'm gonna be continuing in the series, but it was an okay ride while I was reading it. Yours truly was almost perfect. It wasn't quite up there with part of your world, but it was pretty dang good. A solid romance. Abby Jimenez just is one of the premier romance authors in my opinion. I just love the way that she writes and I absolutely love this story. Starling House. I'm gonna say was almost perfect as well. I love this story. This came and blew me out of the water. I was not expecting to love this one as much as I did. I didn't give it a five stars. I gave it like a 4.5. So it was almost perfect. It was almost there, recommend. Same thing with the collected regrets of Clover. This story came and really, really took me by surprise. I loved the overall story of Clover who is a death doula. So she's basically spends her entire life ushering people into death. But this is also kind of about her learning to live her life. And I just thought it was beautiful. And there's definitely a lot of talk about death and how we react to death as Americans and we don't talk about it. I just was really stunned by how beautiful that story was. The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten is okay. Not great, not bad. I still, again, have not decided whether or not I'm going to continue in this series. Like the story was interesting enough overall that I might continue. The Lonely Hearts Book Club, I'm going to give an okay, not great, not bad rating rather than meh forgettable, even though I do think that in time, I will completely forget this story. But overall, while I was reading it, I do think that it was tender, it was sweet, it was heartwarming. and. And it was exactly kind of what you're looking for when you go into a book like that. So I don't think it deserves a meh forgettable rating. The Marriage Act, waste of time, don't bother. I did not like this book at all. I did not enjoy the story of it at all. And it was the first book that I rated below a three star this year. I was supremely disappointed because I really, really wanted to love it. Only Survivors by Megan Miranda, absolutely meh forgettable. The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I'm gonna say it was okay, not great, not bad. It could potentially warrant a meh forgettable rating, but... I'm gonna leave it there because I did have a good time while I was reading it. The Unmaking of June Farrell by Adrienne Young was almost perfect. I absolutely adored that story so much. The Sweet Spot, I loved it. This is another one that came out of nowhere and I loved it so much more than I thought that I was going to. So this was such a pleasant surprise for me. So I'm happy to give it a loved it rating. The Stranger Upstairs, waste of time, don't bother. That was nothing like what I was expecting it to be. The story was really just about how awful the main character was. I didn't focus nearly enough on the house or the spooky things that were happening in the house, in my opinion. I did not get the vibes that I was looking for. Wayward by Amelia Hart, almost perfect. I'm telling you the magic realism stories this year have just been top tier chef's kiss. They've been working for me so well and I've just been blown away by a lot of the ones that I've been reading. What Lies in the Woods, loved it. That was Kay Alice Marshall's adult thriller debut and I thought she did a fantastic job. And then the seven year slip, I put this on here because this is actually one that I'm currently reading and it should be the last 2023 release that I read of the year. I'm just shy of the 50% mark. And so as of right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the okay, not great, not bad category. I don't know how I'm gonna feel by the end of it, but right now it's not blowing me out of the water. 
All right, everybody. So these are all of the 2023 releases that I've read this year and my thoughts on them. I didn't rate any of these five stars. However, all of the ones in the almost perfect category, I would absolutely recommend. So even though they might not have reached God tier level, they are certainly well worth your time and attention. And overall, I feel like I'm pretty pleased with the 2023 releases that I've read this year. And I was able to kind of stay within my goal of focusing on backlist because this was just a very small percentage of what I read in 2023. All right, everybody, those are all of the new releases that I read in 2023 and some of my thoughts about them. Please comment down below and let me know if you've read any of the books that I discussed in this video and what your thoughts were. I would love to know. If you have made it to the end of this video, but you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some kind of magic emoji. I think there might be like a magic wand, maybe a little top hat guy, any kind of magic emoji in honor of some of the great magical realism that I read in 2023. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I am participating in Bookmas meeting from December 1st through December 25th, you should see one video upload from me a day if I'm successful. And so if you want to see what content I have in store, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you do not miss anything. Y'all know that I love connecting with you in all of my videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I've discussed in this video. Until next time, guys.